All right. Test, baby, test, baby. One, two, three, four. Test, baby, test. It's not test, but check. Check, check. check. <laughs> Those are hard times, huh? Yeah. Yep. Brother, I think we're on, man. Let me go ahead and uh, show this as well. Uh, what is crack and lacking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Oak Brook, Illinois, a western suburb of Chicago. And welcome to the Movement Podcast live stream here on Facebook. And today, I've got a very, very, very special guest. I've got my man, Jose Gaetan, who is from Burbank, California. He's got a t-shirt out there. It's called Straight Out of Burbank, baby. <laughs> and uh, very excited about him. He's an entre entrepreneur. He's my business partner. And uh, I just want you guys to know, man, uh, we are excited. Well, we got, looks like we got some people here already uh, dropping, dropping some hellos, man. What's up? Richard Welch, Richard Welch, what's going on, brother? Uh, Jesenia Acosta, and if you wouldn't mind, everybody, if you wouldn't mind, share, share, share. Our topic today is how to go from the bottom to the top. If you are an entrepreneur out there and uh, you're aspiring to be an entrepreneur and uh, or you're on the fence, you're considering entrepreneurship, uh, or already, you've already started your business, we want to share with you our ideas and thoughts and best practices on how to get from the bottom to the top. So Jose Gaetan, co-founder of PHP Agency, straight out of Burnback, mid-six-figure earner, making some bucadalas, right? Uh, proud father of two boys. Some of my best pictures uh, the last couple of years of kids running around, especially on 4th of July weekend, is Jose Gaetan's kids, man, especially Lukey, man, Lukey's picture. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best picture in the world, man. That's a classic one. So, uh, Jose, man, welcome to the show, brother. How you doing? Hey, man, good to be here, bro. Good to be here. Uh, I'm doing great, man. I'm excited, man. Excited to be here and uh, share share the stage here with you and the message and you know about entrepreneurship, money, smart movement. Man, it's always on the move with messages about yeah. current events, man. What's taking place in our society, man? So, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm happy to be here with you, man, and uh, hear about the goat experience. Got to tell the world, man. I, I heard you met the goat. I I just have a I just have a painting of the goat here in my office <laughs> by Eric Wall, the goat, and you got you actually met him, man. How was that, man? It was crazy. So, listen, um, part of what we talk about actually today, some of the things we talk about networking and and uh, because you know both you and I, we, we come from nowhere, man. We don't have the the pedigree. We don't have the we don't have the uh, the the proper last name. We don't have a rich uncle. For everybody that's watching this, you know Jose Jose Gatan and I. We come from average and ordinary families, and and but we're doing extraordinary things in in, in business like as as entrepreneurs and 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 part of networking and getting your name out there, being the mayor of your own little town. Uh, Jose, about three four weeks ago, Michael Jordan's officially opened up for business. It wasn't publicized. No, they just opened up, and we're driving around it for about almost a year. So, oh man, Michael Jordan's gonna open up. Michael Jordan. I wonder if it's really him. I wonder if it's really him. You know, I wonder if he's just licensing his name. And uh, and so um, I got I went in there, had lunch. It was a fast start school. We went in there, took some of my top guys there. Um, and then we had lunch, got to know the manager, got to know the servers, got to know some of the people there. And next thing you know, uh, I went there a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks, and the manager kept saying, you know, you keep bringing a lot of people here, man. What is it that you do? And uh, so I, listen, I, I, we run a tech-based uh, firm. Uh, that offers insurance products and retirement services right here in Oak Brook. Uh, we're, in, we're in 49 states. We just can't, you know, we're not in 50 because we can't find somebody to move to Montana. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, uh, oh, by the way, guess, guess, who, guess who just joined us too as well, man? <laughs> Check this out in a second. Three, two, one. Booyah! Actually, Hello. Hello. In the house, baby. Go on, Joe. Go My man. Yes. Brother, that's it. And the reason I'm sharing these books is because in about that's awesome, bro. That's it, man. We got uh, Pelayo in the house, man. So, up, uh, President? hey, yeah, no, it's not just Pelayo. It's MC. MC. I, oh, dude, yeah, you got you got sick. He's got <laughs> six spoken word. He's got a six uh, spoken word game, man. I just dude. Gotta I got a call from Dre today, man. He was like, hey, we want to get you at the studio recording. I was like, ah, I'm kind of busy selling shirts, bro. <laughs> that's crazy. Bro, we were just talking about uh, meeting Michael Jordan last night, man. And, oh, that's uh, dope. Yeah. It's it crazy. And uh, 
So, you know, she, you know, he, he was getting, he was getting, you know, uh, he was in, he was walking through and, and I said, uh, Michael, dude, congratulations on your, your new restaurant. Cause I was, I was invited there by the manager. I said, congratulations on, on, on the new restaurant. I said, what's, what was that like? So I pointed to a picture. What is that like um, playing against Dr. J? I mean, you looked up to him and you know, the, the, the passing the torch happens, dude, I don't, I don't even remember that picture was taken, but I just started creating a, a connection with him. Everybody was just flooding. Everybody was just flooding. He's surrounded. He had two bodyguards, and I just saw he was, he was doing his thing. And he, he, he walked by us a couple of times. He tapped me on the shoulder. I said, "Hey, Michael, just, I, you tapped me right here." I said, "Michael, just this nice to meet you, man. Congratulations. Just let you know, man. Uh, you, you changed my life, man. Uh, Chicago basketball, basketball, NBA will never be the same without Michael Jordan playing playing ball." And uh, anyway, Michael, yeah. Don't, wa don't wash your shoulder, bro. Don't ever take a no, shot. No, no, this hand, this, this hand, the shoulder. No. Now here's here's. The kicker, and we did a live stream on it yesterday. She and I were outside just doing a live stream, mind our own business, and, and right where we're sitting was the, it was the exit to the patio. And right across the window was where he was sitting. He walks out the patio. I'm in the middle of the live stream. And he walks straight into my live stream. Dude, uh -huh. I'm, out, he's out, I'm about to smoke a cigar. <laughs> and, and, and who does he sit next to? He sits down next to Sheena. Oh, right, you know, this shit out and chilling, and everybody flooded him, taking pictures, selfie, whatever. And I was thinking to myself, here's my thought: Am I going to risk this? Do I want a selfie, or am I going to ride out this ambiance for as long as I can, man? And bro, an hour and a half conversation. Nice. An hour and a half conversation. Everything about. Uh, everything about. Um, he introduced me to his people, dude. In addition to that, remember when we went to Ohika Castle? We watched the 85 Bears. Yeah. Yes. I was surrounded with Harry, uh, um, Harry Dent. I was surrounded with Richard Dent and mm -hmm. Otis Wilson. Those guys were on the Bears team, and uh, Otis Wilson was in that ESPN 30 for 30 nice. with the Chicago Bears. It's nice. But, uh, you know. You, you want to audition for uh, the tallest Filipino in the league or what, bro? <laughs> bro, you know, him being 6'6", six, yeah. six, he, he wasn't that much taller than me, man. I, you know, I'm 6'3", I'm maybe 6'4", with high heels. If Gaetan and I on each other's shoulders, bro, maybe we could block you, bro. <laughs> and I think the three of us, I think if the three of us uh, play MJ, he'd probably school all of us together, bro. Oh, that's awesome, man. Didn't that's we play great. basketball at a house, Gaetan, and you like, you got a three-point shot, didn't you? You got a good shot. Gaetan's a baller, I, man. I think I can ball up. Uh, I, I score a couple shots on Jordan, man, maybe a couple. <laughs> you didn't play me, bro. I would have shut that down, bro. <laughs> Oh man, Gaetan is the Gaetan is the Mexican Steph Curry, bro, of PHP. Is that right? Yes. Is that right? You just you just making it rain, huh? We used yeah. to we used to when I was play some ball with our CEO, man. He would uh he would lay up some uh, a nice foundational bricks. Our CEO. <laughs> that's, that's another conversation with Pat. <laughs> well, listen, man. A lot of people are joining us on live stream, man. Really appreciate you guys sharing this uh this live stream. Um, as you guys can see, when you guys are interacting with us and commenting, man, it's popping up on the thing. So we just thank you guys for for being part of live stream. But listen, let's, let's give them some value, shall we, gentlemen? Let's give them some value in this live stream. Because um, if I edified uh, and introduced Jose, I got time, but let me make sure I edify and introduce George Palaya. But George, another co-founder of PHP Agency, he sits as his chair, the company's only chairman's council, over half a million dollars of cash flow, Super proud of you, George Ply. Started entrepreneurship at 19 years old, simply because you got a rich uncle, right? Yep, my grandpa. Uh, my grandpa. <laughs> Cuba's got money, man. I'm I'm somewhat related to uh, Fidel, bro. On the you know, <laughs> Castro, right? He, he owns everything. It's, that's communism, right? Government owns it. The government owns everything. But uh, we want to officially welcome George Palio to the show, and uh, the topic today is how to get from the bottom. To the top, you know. There's so many people say, Matt. You know, uh, you know, we see you guys on stage. You know, we just came back from Vegas. By the way, phenomenal Vegas convention, Force Awakens. Ridiculous, you guys, man. You guys, you guys are speakers. Woo! By the yeah. way, yeah. best event yet, man. Yep, yep. And so uh, many, many of you who are just watching this show um, may not know. But uh, uh, Jose and George are just a couple of our business partners, along with our CEO, founder, Patrick and David, who, who, by the way, we're not embellishing by, this, by, by any moment, but 
this is just a, a few of the partners along with our CEO founder. There's about another uh, 15 of us, 19 of us, that got Oscar de la Hoya to invest in PHP. Based on the gentleman that you see on this live stream, the production and performance of Jose Gaetan, the production performance of George Palau, their national organizations, got Oscar de la Hoya and uh, David Brenner uh, to invest in our firm. How do you feel about that? You're in business officially. As an active investor, Oscar de la Hoya is an active investor in you guys. How do you feel? Tell me how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I feel if anyone wants to start some beef, we got some fighters, man, in our corner. It's no coincidence we got some fighters in our corner, right? Uh, that's exciting, bro. I think someone just posted, man, and we're gonna get MJ as a speaker. Who knows, right, so Paula? Maybe you can get that. You can negotiate something there, man. We're, we're gonna speak it. We're gonna speak in the life right now. Just speak it out, man. Speak it out. Now, for me, I'll, I'll be quick, man. Um, you know, you, you, you dream about starting something from small, a handful of people, and getting to, to a place where you're exploding and you, you go into the place where it's the unknown. And when you get to a place of the unknown, man, you have so many things that's happening. It's, you know, it's just not happening by accident. You know, there's a higher power. You know, there's, there's people looking out for us. There's just a higher thing taking place right now. When you see all these investors and people with big names, people that, that invest in future billion dollar companies like my boy George talked about. And just to have someone like that with that kind of credibility, that name, uh, that na that recognition, who's been loved in sports and, and now in business, it's exciting, man, to see what's coming in the next three years. So I'm fired up, man. Those are my thoughts. Yeah, awesome. George, what you, what you feeling about it? I think I had some time to digest this for a minute. You know, Ceci said something on our call the other day. She said uh, – like, you know, when you look at the Staples Center and there's a statue of Gretzky, the statue, and I think Patrick said it, statue of Gretzky, Johnson, and um, in De La Hoya. And the fact that they've all come to PhD, you know, to speak and see the company. Um, and now that he's an actual investor in it, you know, there's a sign there, man. There's a sign that there's so many things that have to happen for us to get to this point as a company. Yeah. So, many things, so many conversations, so many meetings, so many negotiations on so many people from Patrick leading the way on everybody to then, you know, people saving associates to become MDs and that MD going out there and doing this production and that production helps the company. And like, when you look at how, um, how many, how many things had to happen for us to get here and you look at that, like, what are the odds? What are the odds that we can do this? Right. Uh, I think it's just, I think God really wants us uh, to do something really good. And, um, and I think that, that I'm very excited to just be a part of that, man. We're blessed. We re really, really are blessed to be a part of history. Like there's a lot of people that are, there's a lot of people that make money. Yeah. There's a lot of companies that make money. You know, we got into it in a conversation. It was pretty funny. A lot of people make money, but there's not a lot of people that make history. And there's a difference in making money and making history. So we're making history. Making history, bro. What's, What's up, up? Paul? What's up, Pascio? Good to see you, bro. <laughs> By the way, another, another co-founder of PHP right here in the house, man. Good to see you, brother. Hey, it's good to be seen, man. I saw your Michael Jordan uh, uh, counter. That was awesome. It was nuts, man. I, I, dude, I could, I didn't have enough money in the bank to pay him to do that. So that was, that was, that was favor, that was favor all the way, man. It's praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know uh, uh, Siobhan was such a cigar smoker, man. That thing looked like a little hefty, uh, hefty dude. Yeah, thing. She knows. Tina, that's what I said. He said Siobhan. Siobhan. He just said, yeah, it's all good. My man. My, my, my wife, you can definitely, my, mostly, but my wife is uh, part Cuban. So, George, you know, you guys, you know, and <laughs> the relation, the Cuban relation. By the way, just so you guys know, um, Jordan's cigar of choice is St. Cristobal. Um, and he, we had, he shared me a funny story about uh, when he first started his career. They, they just buy a bunch of cheap-ass cigars. They're like, it was called Las Vegas. Las Vegas cigars. And they just smoked the cigar. And then, listen, it was his rookie year, uh, rookie year, second year in. And they buy a bunch of cigars. And, they, you know, he, by the way, he's very, very frugal. He's very, just this conversation about money. He's very frugal. And uh, he was telling me a story about the cigars. Yeah, I, I go buy, we go buy a cigar box. You know, uh, my, one of my guys get 12, I get 12. And, 
those cheapo swisher sweets that that'd be it, man. <laughs> those be the cigars. But, uh, nice. Definitely. So uh, great to be in business with you guys with this opportunity of Oscar De La Hoya, David Brenner. Um, and, and, you know, the press release for this announcement should be going out either today or tomorrow, maybe Friday. So we're expecting it. Um, but listen, I, I want to I share some facts here real quick, just so you guys know the state of the nation. Uh, Jose, let me let me switch out this screen here real quick. Let me let me sw swap you out real quick. And I'm going to show some facts here. You got it. On, on the live stream. So um, let me see if I can get to you. Uh, boom, here, share, let me share my screen here. Oh, you know what? It won't allow me to share my screen, but uh, I guess I guess you got to verbalize it. Okay, so check this guy, check this uh, fact out. Um, the minimum wage that you, uh, the hourly wage for a household to earn 40 hours a week to rent a two bedroom home. Uh, in the state of Illinois, it's twenty dollars an hour. So if you're raising a family, you want you want to rent a two, not buy, but you want to rent a two bedroom home to raise your family, husband, wife, raise your family. You need to make twenty bucks an hour in the state of Illinois. In California, guess what it is in California? Fifty, almost, bro. Thirty dollars and ninety two cents. So you need if you're in California watching this, you need to be making thirty bucks an hour minimum wage without paying more than thirty percent of your income in tax to rent a two bedroom rental home. And that nuts? Um, it's called, uh, this is a report called Out of Reach 2017, the high cost of housing. Um, here's another report. Um, the, minimum, uh, the minimum income just to afford an apartment in state of Illinois is $18.78. In California, it's $26.65, right? Um, let's see here. The, um, the hours, the hours you need to work in order, uh, making minimum wage, the hours that you need to be working on an hourly basis in the state of Illinois, based on minimum wage to afford a one bedroom apartment is 75 hours a week. Hmm. Okay, 75 hours a week. In California, 92 hours a week. Wow. Yeah, you, you got an expensive state out there, man. Wow. So, that's why Uber is blowing up, huh? Is that why? <laughs> <laughs> that's why that's why Uber's blowing up, man. So for those of you that's, that's joined this podcast, we want to get you from away from that bottom. We want, we want you to stop working and expecting minimum wage. We want you to stop expecting to be, to be making twenty bucks an hour or in this case thirty bucks an hour. So so uh Jose, since you since you, you got on here uh initially, what what is your best thoughts, man? What's your thoughts, man? You started from the bottom. A viewer watching this right now, man. Uh, whether they're one of our associates in PHP or an aspiring entrepreneur, how do you start getting traction? What, 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 would, what would you say to somebody out there? How do I get traction to get my business started? Uh, you know, you hear, you hear this all the time or quotes or sayings, but I remember someone saying that when you, you don't learn, when you don't learn to hate, you, ser you soon tolerate. And right. You have to hate where you're at, man. It begins with that that emotion, man. You got it's got to really bother you, man, where you're at. Uh, I remember where, for me, being raised by a single mom who came to this country from Mexico. I was born in Mexico myself. She came here. She raised four kids and ran her own business. And I saw her hustle as an entrepreneur. And and you know, I was I was a knucklehead. In my 18 to 23, 24, just they didn't have direction. And then I got to a point where you look at your parents, more my mom who raised me, and I said, man, if she's doing all this and she hasn't given up on me, um, I got to do something about this, man. I got to do something for her. It's got to bother me enough to say, man, I, I cannot tolerate this. So for me, it was an emotional drive. So whatever, whoever's watching this, it's got to really drive you, man. It's got to really make you cry. It's got to it's gotta move you and realize, man, I don't want to be where I'm at. I just don't want to be where I'm at. If she, if she raised four kids running a business, your parents should not be working at age 60, 70, 80, unless they, they choose to. Most right. people have to. So for me, it was that emotional drive. And then and then and then just committing to finding a mentor. I remember when I found a mentor in the industry uh, 10 plus years ago, that changed my life because I didn't have any direction. I wanted to find someone that's been there, done that, can kind of prepare me for what's to come. The, the finding a mentor is 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 key. And I think that's one thing all three of us here can obviously agree to. So, so 
So one, the emotional drive, find a mentor. And you got to learn the skill set, man, the basic skill set of this business, whether it's phone calls, scripts, sales, um, learning how to communicate, man. You got to you got to learn that and study the business, man. I remember George and I, when we were out of an office in Northridge, believe it or not, guys, George and I were out of an office together with some of the key leaders. And we were in the office, man. But I can tell you one thing. He was the first guy in the office, last guy to leave, listening to audio, right, taking notes, whether it's he's preparing the skill set or he's writing a new rhyme. Yep. yep. Right. But he was doing it right when no one's watching. <laughs> when no one's watching, dude, that's what matters. It's not what you're doing when everyone's watching. When no one's watching, you're a student in the business. And once you get that, man, the coaching, man, I think the rest, rest, rest comes a lot easier. Awesome. Awesome, Jose. George, let me, let me be a little bit more specific with you. You were a server, Red Lobster, right? Uh, you had no background in life insurance. You had no background in financial. You had no, you know, you had some background in, in someone in business observing it. But how does somebody get from the bottom and start elevating and getting some traction in the insurance industry when sometimes they feel it's technical, sometimes they feel they got a lot of products and situations to learn? How does one get ahead? Um. When I got started in the business, I didn't know anything about insurance at all. I just knew that it wasn't insurance for me. It didn't really, you know, uh, I'm not going to say the opportunity, the industry didn't matter because I wanted it to be something I was passionate about. Um, I just wanted to to take care of my family, dude, straight up. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to be able to travel freely. I wanted a great life. And when I found the insurance industry, um, and I saw the earning opportunity. First, it was about the money for me, and then it came. Then it became about like when my mom got diagnosed with cancer, and, and I sold her a life insurance policy. Then it became real. Mm. Um, and so, I think for somebody that's brand new in the business, I used to try to um, find people and find clients and and put and like like sell them stuff. And then when I started seeing the value of what we did, it went from selling to like teaching. And I realized that I really like teaching. And I think there's a lot of people that are getting involved in the industry. Um, they're getting involved because they want to make good money. And then maybe they're not having the success that they want to have because they're trying to sell versus trying to teach. Um, Interesting. I, think, I think some of the, 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 the best way to go about it is to, to start teaching people. And when you have a conversation to approach it from a, a a question conversation versus a statement conversation, um, you know, and, and when you're solicit when you're soliciting or you're selling something, you're trying to get something from somebody. When you get involved in a building model and you ask somebody, do you want to make more money? You're trying to give them something. So instead of getting something, if you can give something that opens up the conversation to this person, now being more open to making more money because the reality is they need more money so that they can save more money, get insurance and retire and do all that stuff. And so when that person comes now, uh, they see what we do on the product side of it and they're open to, to saving and doing things like that. So I think because we lead with the opportunity for somebody getting involved in the industry today, you're going around, you're asking people, do you want to buy life insurance and do that? As amazing as it is, people aren't going to be open. But if you go around and you say, hey, you know what? I'm opening my own brokerage, my own channel, my own agency, my own this. I'm looking for good people. Do you want to make more money? And you lead with the opportunity. Uh, people are more open to that. And then 50% of those guys that come down become clients. So by offering an opportunity, you build your book of clients. Um, but then it, again, it comes from a teaching standpoint when you're starting to present the product. Yeah, because uh, there's no urgency to buy life insurance. No, some, sadly, there's no urgency to plan for your retirement. Uh, however, when people are in real estate or mortgages or taxes, there is re uh, urgency because you have a tax deadline. There's urgency because you want you need a place to live. There is urgency because you want to refinance and you know save a few hundred bucks extra a month as compared to you were in, in previous months. So I, I definitely see your point, Jose. Uh, there's a question I hear posed by Servando. Uh, when you are starting off, I think this is a pretty good question. When you are starting off, Servando Servando Marquez is asking a question. He's, he's one of my loyal followers and commenters on um, on YouTube as well. But uh, Servando is asking a question here about balance so when you have a family you got kids wife and you're launching your business getting started do you ever find balance or, or is it 100 percent commitment from from the, the day you decide to be in business i think i saw ricky aguilar respond to that good question by the way but ricky just responded so there's there's as an existing it doesn't exist. 
<laughs> no balance. Yeah. You know, exactly. this, is, this is Ricky, by the way, that you saw him and his wife rock the stage, um, yeah. blowing up, opening up offices, and how, you know, in a matter of, you know, 10 months, crossover six figures, but there was a matter of, of un, not being balanced. So, you know, forget forget about us three right now for a second who's asking this question. Just think about, like, our CEO will talk about it all the time. The professional athlete that, that leaves for training camp, whether it's, you know, three months, six months, to get into shape. And he gets away from his family, gets away from the norm, the norm for a period of time. Or um, that, that person who's going into the military to be all you can be, and you leave for boot camp, and you leave for a year, two years and then you go into, into service, or um, the actor that needs to prepare for that script, right? That big script, and he leaves for for three months to go out there and get in, in that zone, and if that's a season to prepare. Yep. So you have, to, you have to really relate to what it takes to win, and it's not just our platform; it's just in life in general. You have to know there's a season in your life you have to get away to prepare, and it, if you're not looking for balance, man. You're looking for magic. When you have that magic, you can really get into the zone. Of entrepreneurship. So to answer your question, they're, they're, don't seek the balance, man. Seek seek the control of chaos because you know you're going somewhere. And most people don't understand that. Most people want an, a, a, a well-balanced life and they want life like this. That's average and ordinary. Success was like this sure. before you know it, you're here. So don't seek that. Just seek, get in a way, focus on you, and then grow. And before you know it, you get to a place that most people are not. Are not. Because you decided to do, decided not to seek balance, but more magic is what you're looking for. By the way, uh, if you guys didn't know, these guys drive some sick cars. You know, you come from the bottom to the top. By the way, uh, how's that Tesla, Jose? You know, Elon Musk just posted that the, the newest Model X just beat a, a Lamborghini Aventador <sighs> zero to sixty. So the Tesla's. Pretty fast, but I love the Tesla, man. It's crazy, real dude. It's like a big laptop computer screen in your car, man. Yeah, crazy he ride. Likes to call it a spaceship on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know what? The the car that I'm gonna have to get because after we drove our Steos Rolls Royce Dawn. Uh -huh. my, wife, my wife's like, we get into we get into Rolls Royce. Hey, dude, the, the Rolls Royce. But for those for those of you who are watching this video right now, watching this live stream. Um, our CEO treated us to 20 exotic cars, re rented, of course, uh, in Las Vegas. Every exotic car in Vegas was ours. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you crazy? How, I mean, how was that? How was that ghost? What did you have, the ghost? I had the ghost, bro. I had the ghost. I mean, my, I remember my first car, man. It was a beat-up 1997 cut, Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. I bought there in Orange County when I was in Marine Corps. And uh, I think the cool thing about it had digital in a digital speedometer but that that ghost unbelievable man that ghost it's like a big couch with muscle <laughs> you know but uh, uh, uh what were you driving vegas george a red ferrari 458 man nice, nice. <laughs> what, was your, what was your first what was your first car ever a 1984 Chevy van with no seats. <laughs> we were racing, not you, not you there. We were racing, not you and Stephanie in a in a Lambo. The Lambo, the Lambo ended up winning the Ferrari. So correct, nice. right. it was fun. It so was fun. you, what do you drive? What do you drive now, George? Double O Seven Audi. I I drive a, a 1977 Oldsmobile. <laughs> I'm trying to get the windows tinted. I'm just trying to make some money, y'all. Uh, <laughs> no, we have a couple of Audis, it's some some black horse. But you know, uh, going back to the question of on balance, man. Yeah. When you think about your dream life, guy, to the, the gentleman I forgot his name that asked that. What was his name, Matt? Servando. Servando. When you think about your dream life, bro, I want to I want to I want to say something to that. Your dream life doesn't have balance. Okay, I want you to think about it. I want you to think about the house, the travel, the speaking engagements, the, the, the charity dinners, the movement, like the travel, the vacation. Like, what do you think? The meetings that you're a part of, the book signings you got to go do, the, the, the photographer sessions you got to go. Like, that life doesn't have balance. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. 
you got to know that there's no there's no balance when you're coming up and there's no balance at the top. And what you really want is you want a life that doesn't have balance. You know what balance is? It's kind of like the same thing every day, man. It's like eating the same food every day. I love Chipotle. I don't want to eat it every day. I love sushi. I don't want to eat it every day. I don't want the same thing every single day. I like variety. And the, the, the imbalances are what give every other thing meaning. So sometimes seeking that, by the way, the problem isn't, the problem is, is not being out of balance. It's the fact that you think that you want balance when the reality is you don't want it. You want freaking crazy is what you want. And, uh, and you got to stop holding on to that. People, nobody gets to the top with, with this whole thing called balance, man. People is freaking, it doesn't happen. And you don't want it, by the way. Yeah. You don't want, if you can control it, it's not big enough. Yep. You want a life that's out of control. You want this, a love that's out of control. You want a body that's out of control. So stop trying to have control because it's that's not what you want. You want to lose control. And in there, and I'll, I'll say this, I'm not I'm not married. I don't have kids. But in there, you got to find the moments for those things. And there's plenty of time for it. It's, you just got to make the time. So people think like, oh, I'm just going to do all this. No, dude, there's plenty of freaking time to do it all. Somebody thinks that they can have a great body, great business, great family, great all that stuff at the same time. That's nonsense. That's somebody else's thinking. So let's talk about distractions real quick, guys. Let's talk about distractions because I know uh, when we were in town in Vegas, there's another company down the street that's doing their very best to try to distract us. They're 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 reacting in such a way that they're calling us out on social media. Uh, but we're not going to we're not going to go down to the level. You know why? Here's why. How many people in America? 320, 30, 330 million. 330 yep. million. How many how many how many agents in our industry? 150. 150,000. Right. And so we need a hundred we need 150,000 to effectively try to help at least half of the 330, which is one one what 160. So there's 160 million. So these 150,000 agents aren't even putting a dent in the marketplace. We're not worried about any distraction from any company. You know why? Because the guys that's on this live stream right now are thinking bigger, are thinking a whole lot bigger. And we are, uh, we are thinking about the marketplace where so many people are going paycheck to paycheck. I just shared it earlier, uh, needing to work, uh, make you know, minimum wage, working 75 hours a week and 92 hours respectively in California. The last thing we're thinking about is your people coming to PHP. Is your people hitting us up and, and uh, of us actively going up? Listen, there's so many people on the marketplace there today, but but things like that are distractions. So how does somebody that's uh, coming up in the business, coming up as an entrepreneur, avoid distractions just like you guys have to get to the top and stay in their A-game? George, I'll let you hit that one. Um. I think it just depends on the level of distractions when you're when you're coming up. Um, I think it has a lot to do with what area, what session, what, what I guess time in your life you're in. For the young guys, the distractions are going to be the party. You know, um, it's going to be the partying. It's going to be the girls. For the girls, it's going to be the partying, and it's going to be the guys. And you got to know what the distraction is in order to know it's a distraction. And then you got to put the distraction in perspective. I had this conversation with this young guy the other day when we were leaving Vegas. He like finds us, runs up to this table in the middle of a meeting and he just starts asking questions. And I love it. He's hungry. He wants to learn. And, um, and I said, what do you want to make a month, bro? Like, you know, 10 grand. I said, okay, here's what the distraction is going to cost you. It's going to cost you 10 grand. So just make sure the distraction's worth what you want because it's going to take it. You can't, it's just, that's what it is. So do you want the 10 grand? Or do you want the distraction? So if it's a girl, is that girl worth 10 grand? You got to put the, you got to put that distraction in perspective. Ooh. You know, um, if it's a party, right. And that party is going to take you away from your office Friday night, get you maybe lazy or the weekend and right. Whatever it is, is a distraction is the fun you're going to have at that party worth the fact that you're going to drive a, you know, broke ass, ugly car, uh, worry about money, not be able to pay bills, you know, is a distraction worth that? And I think in those moments, what people probably don't do is they don't measure the distraction versus the goal. Um, and we were all distracted. Come on. Like I've, I've been like, when I started, man, I, you know, Friday night, you come Saturday yeah. morning. I didn't, I just left the club to go to the BOM. Okay. Uh, <laughs> like, let me, let me the mouthwash in so I don't smell like <laughs> Um, it's real though. It's real. And I think sometimes people can't be real. You know what I'm saying? Like they want to be perfect. Dude, 
we're human beings. We freaking, we all screwed up as leaders. You just got to screw up less. And that little voice that's in the back of your head, man, that's, that's wisdom speaking. That's, that's God. That's the mentorship that you got. That's the coaching that you know better. Then you got to listen to that guy a little bit more. You listen to that guy. Um, but distraction is, is a part of it. And the only way that you can uh, eliminate it, you don't eliminate it. You just reduce it. And then eventually you mature. And then it's, then it's, um, it's a conscious decision and it doesn't affect you as much. The things that affect it, you just don't have a hold of you, but breaking out of it, it's a process and don't beat yourself up when you're falling back, but, but make progress is what I tell my guys. Love it. Hey, George, uh, uh, there's a good question out here. Uh, how, how, or excuse me, Jose, how do you get from the bottom when you just want to explode like a volcano? Who, who asked that question? Jose, Jose Robles, I think. What do you do when you hit the bottom and want to come up like a volcano? Because I remember when you guys first started PHP Agency, you guys had zero co- yeah. zero products, zero carriers, uh, right? You guys go going through your distractions. That's true. Uh, how do you react? How do you bounce? Uh, man, um, you know, there's one way up, man. So the good thing is you're at the bottom. You can look up, man. Um, look, um, there's, uh, some, there's something I talked about a long time ago. It's just faith through adversity, man. Faith through adversity. Your faith's got to be bigger than your fear. Your faith's got to be bigger than your adversity, man. You got to check your faith. Uh, they, I think they said, uh, fake it till you make it. And someone said, faith it till you make it, right? You got to faith it. So rock bottom, man. You know, sometimes we, I think we put too much on that. I think we, 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 when you think about what's rock bottom, when it's all perspective, man. Look at the third. Look at the third world country. Look, look what's happening to certain countries where they don't have liberty, they don't have food, they don't have rights, they don't have running water. Um, you know, that's that's kind of bottom, man. That's perspective, right? That's kind of like, whew, how do you go from there yeah. to to, to yeah. the top? Over here, you know, when it's rock bottom, whether it's you know, you can't do anything about your health. You know, God willing, you pray for some good health. Typically, it's finances, guys. Let's just face it. Let's have an honest conversation. Typically, it's money. Money is where you hit rock bottom, or maybe it's it's a vice. You have a vice. It's a habit. It's a bad habit. It's a drug, alcohol, this, uh, you know, permis- per- being promiscuous. There's something that's holding you back, and, and that sucks. It's a distraction. Uh, but for majority of Americans, man, it's money. Money, money, money. That's the rock bottom. So just know, man, you got, you got, you got two arms, two legs. You have people that have done it before. You got to seek out for help. Don't 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 feel bad about asking for help. Sometimes we feel bad about asking for help and say, "Hey, reach out, man. I can. I need some help. Can you direct me? What do I do?" And that's why that's where I believe mentorship comes in. And and when you think you're at the bottom, you're not that far away from one one handshake from someone that's been there before. So you just cannot feel like you're alone, man. You got to pick up the phones, ask for some help. This guy asked for a lot of help. Um, you know, when I think about 2009, when we when we didn't have anything, it was flat out faith on my knees, praying, and then getting my ass to work. I mean, we're talking about from from six in the morning to midnight to go to work to make things happen. And that was in 2009 when we started the company. And um, that's what it takes, man. So so wherever you're at, just ask for help and don't look at perspective when, it, when you think about the the, uh, the bottom. One of the things I one of the things I want to do right now is reflect on our new blueprint. Now, how many guys excited? You guys excited about this stuff, man? You know, we have the new blueprint for those Ooh, of you awesome. who are part of PHP Agency. Right. We have a blueprint for you guys to go from the bottom to the top. So, if you're watching Arista right now and you're part of our firm, awesome, use this. If you're not and you don't have a blueprint, you don't have a playbook, you don't have a a process to get you from the bottom to the top. We have a blueprint. Now, this is not for sale. Uh, uh, to anybody outside of our associates and PHP agency. But the bottom line is I want you guys to look for this in your respective field. You want to look for this in your respective endeavor. You got to look for a blueprint that allows you know, that this thing is, is pretty thick. It's probably fresh off the presses. But I think there's some evergreen things here that I think is, is pretty pretty um, awesome for us to all learn from because I think a lot of other businesses, especially our associates at PHP, have a definitely um, so, some tangible, some practicality here. So, um, for example, I'm referencing page 83 in this blueprint. But uh, uh, one of the things here, it says, somebody asked a question, what are three key, their key to being successful in your eyes? Um, well, let's talk about number one. Let's talk about some practicality. 
Um, know, know where you want to be 90 days from now, right? Uh, 90 days from now, uh, Jose, is going to be, uh, what, November coming into Christmas? Yep. You know, what type of financial Christmas do you guys want? That's right. Uh, do, do, do you guys want to be on credit cards for the Christmas? Uh, do you guys want to have a staycation for Christmas? Or, or do you want to be financially free? You know, well, one of the f what funny things is uh, that I promised myself is that I never, ever want to be dependent upon Black Friday. Right? Like, I, I wanted to make sure I made enough money where every day is Black Friday. <laughs> right? So, um, uh, 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 number two, what skills do you need to improve in order to achieve this goal? So, George, on your perspective, what skills did you need to improve when you first started from going to the bottom to the top? What specific skill set did you need to improve? I think there's there's two different aspects of our business, which is selling and building. And selling, I had to learn the three Ps, which is products, presentations, and people. Um, Ooh, was, dropping nuggets. I was a lot younger, so I didn't understand people. I didn't have a lot of credibility with people. And when you don't know a lot, you, you really can't teach a lot. And that goes back to the teaching aspect. So I had to learn the products. And then when you look at somebody that's in sales, they don't just sell you the product. They educate you on all of your options and they – navigate you towards the best decision. If you don't know how those things work, you can't really have a comment or an understanding. So you got to educate yourself on what you sell and also what else you're going to be sitting against. Like, like prepare for the argument. You know what I'm saying? Like if mm -hmm. like McGregor versus uh, what's his name? Is it, is it Mayweather? Mayweather, May, Mayweather mm -hmm. right? You got to prepare for what your, your weakness is, right? And, or be aware of it at least. So if you're going to be in sales, you got to learn what is it that you're going to sit down with against other other products, what other companies, right? You got to, you got to prepare for that part. So that's the product, the presentation part. If, if you're trying to remember what to say and you don't have a cut, you know, like a, a simplified uh, customizable presentation, then you're going to be remembering and you can't be present. You can't be thinking about what you're trying to remember and thinking about what's happening at the same time. So just mastering a presentation. If we can learn how to sing a song, we can learn how to do a presentation. So mastering the presentation and then people, you know, understanding people, reading body language. It's amazing how many people don't have, I think Matt, you recommended a book. It was called uh, uh, emotional intelligence two points, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, 2.0. Yeah. 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 Uh, Jeb Blunt. It's, it's, it's amazing how many people don't just read the person's energy. Like if the, the other day I had to have three conversations the same day, bro, we're fast starting these people. And, and when it comes to making a list, I could tell they're a little bit uncomfortable. And most people just kind of like let that uncomfortable and that awkwardness go. And then they don't get a good list. The person ends up quitting and it's like, they don't understand. And I stopped him and I said, look at, look at me, bro. I said, do you understand why you're doing this or no? Do you understand why you're making this? Let me explain it again. Cause I don't think you fully got it. And I had to explain it a different way. Cause the way I explained it, they didn't get. And sometimes you gotta be willing to change the way that you explain things to people because people learn differently. Like psycho cybernetics, there's a book and it talks about how how people that were failed in in in, in um, spelling ended up becoming champions in spelling because yeah. they attached the, the 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 failure to who they were and then you you teach them differently, right? So you gotta be willing to teach differently. And so then I have another conversation with the girl and I said, I do you trust people? And she's like, No. No. <laughs> I said, I can tell you don't. And I said, but he, look at me. I said, I need you to trust me. I said, trust me until I give you a reason not to, because I'm here to help you. Yeah. And I'm sure you don't have people like that in your life, but I'm one of them. And this is a shot. So don't screw this thing up. And as soon as I had that heart to heart conversation, boom, it just opened up. And I had three of those conversations, eye to eye, heart to heart, trust, trust. So you got to read people. You got to read their energy. And so products, presentations, and people, that's on the selling side. And you can reach out to the carriers, read books on it, Google it, whatever you want, YouTube it. I, I studied all the stuff that I was competing against. And then uh, on the recruiting side, that's a whole leadership conversation. Yeah. Um, but just preparation. The only thing I'll say on that for now uh, due to time is preparation. I wasn't a good leader. I didn't know how to lead people. So I had to over prepare to bring value when I spoke or when I talked to my guys and um, and I would prepare like, guys, here's 10 things we're going to do. Here's why we need to do it. And I would find quotes to validate it. I would find people's stories to validate it. I didn't have a lot of validation because I didn't have success. So I had to use uh, analogies, experiences, other people's stories uh, to add credibility to it. So um, books on leadership, man, books on leadership. If you have a team and uh, an education in your game. Love it. Love it. What is it? Let me I'll have you take this question from Rob Rawl. When or where do you find the time to personally develop? So that's the, that, that's his question. Where do you find time to personally develop? And what skill set did you have to find to build when you first started from the bottom to start climbing to the top? 
Good, good question, Rob, because he definitely got to grow on his business. See this? If I see this? Toyota Way. It's called Audible. If you don't have Audible and you see this, it's called an earpiece. <laughs> so no matter where I'm at, man, I, I got this thing on. You don't know if I'm listening to audio, I'm walking, talking. I'm on. I'm on all the time. Whether it's a phone call or it's, it's my personal development from my car to the restroom, to the grocery store, to the dry cleaners, to, to lunch, to, and I'm on. I, you got to be on. You got to find time. There is no excuse. For me, I do a lot of audio, a lot of audio. So there is time. You just got to go make the time. You, know, you, you got you to take your books with you everywhere you go. You go to the restroom. You go anywhere, man. You got to take everything with you. Um, and you can't make it. There's just time. There, there is time. If you, if you want to develop, you're going to find the time. And a lot of this driving, for me, it's audio. I'm big on audio. Um, and that's it, man. Just take it everywhere you go, guys. I mean, you know, I can tell you late nights, I can tell you early mornings. For me, I'm audio. I'm, I'm on all the time. So that's what works for me. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Um, last point here. Um, as we wrap, we start wrapping and winding down the show. Um, schedule. You know, to get from the bottom to the top, you, you guys both transition from a job to full-time entrepreneurship. Um, how was your guys' schedule um, in terms of uh, when were you building the business? Uh, uh, when were you dedicated to the business? Uh, because, you know, right now in the elevator, all I keep hearing in the elevator, for, obviously for not from entrepreneurs, but everybody's talking about the elevator, oh, it's almost Friday, it's almost Friday, it's almost Friday. That whole weekend mentality is starting to kick in right about now. So how did you guys, when going from the bottom to the top, start disciplining yourself to a specific schedule? George? Um, when I first got started, man, I was really bad at time management. I would give myself, I would go prospecting and I, you know, I'd take three hours to, to talk to two people and, you know, I'd make calls and I'd be at the office and I'd have a conversation with somebody and that led to something else or I'd check email. And what I realized is that's what most people are really bad at is just how they manage their time. And so I, I was broke. That's what happened. I got broke. And I realized, like, this does this does not work, dude. <laughs> it wasn't that the business didn't work. It was that I wasn't working. So I started to realize that I don't have more time, so I just have to be more productive with the time that I do have. So I started setting goals. Um, and they say that everything that we do, it's reward and punishment, right? We avoid pain, gain, pleasure. And I started setting goals that there was a consequence if I didn't do it. because, uh, And that really started to change it. That started to change it for me. I said, hey, if I don't prospect people, it was crazy. One time we had a goal for, it was like a week or two weeks or a month. I don't remember. I think it was a week. And you had to talk to 20 people a day. And you couldn't go home until you talked to 20 people. Like You literally could not go to your house and go to sleep or go home. So it's like 1130 at night. And I'm like, I'm hitting gas stations, talking to people. I'm just trying to find people to talk to because I procrastinated. And the pain of procrastination, that was painful. So yeah. I didn't want to do that the next day. So it forced me to get it done early to, to, to be more productive with my time. So I just think for you, you need to have a clear plan. There's always, you know, urgent, not urgent, important, not important. And you need to classify the activities, what's urgent, what's not urgent, what's important and what's not important. And our job is to do the urgent, important stuff. The urgent, not uh, the urgent, but not important to be delegated. Um, the uh, not important and not urgent needs to just be eliminated. Yeah. So I think uh, I think that that's, it's a square. And I, um, it's really effective for time management. If you write urgent, not urgent, and you write important, not important, and you put what, what you're doing, every single action falls into one of those boxes. And uh, you realize that the things that really make you money is getting in front of people, talking to people um, about our product or our opportunities. And so the consequence of not doing it was I had to work. So I created a time uh, reward punishment program for me. And if I didn't work, I'd have to work Saturday, all Saturday and all Sunday. So I didn't get a chance to see my family and do stuff I wanted to do. And that was my consequence for not being productive with my time. And it forced me to learn to be more productive. By the way, George, is this your uh, your social media handle that I just showed on the screen? I am George Palayo. Am I right? Did we type that? Yeah, right? that's it. I think. Okay. So if, if people want to find more and follow George Palayo, there's his handle. Uh, check out his Instagram, Facebook all that stuff. Uh, check him out too as well. Um, great comment here from Sam. My buddy Sam was in real estate. He goes, Matt, thank you for your guest, brother. Thanks for the great share of girls of industry. These nuggets service all real estate insurance, ditch digging, <laughs> proper previous uh, proper previous planning prevents 
pitifully poor performance. Ooh, that was tongue twister right there. My man. All right. Um, Eat the frog first thing in the morning by Richard Wells. So, so Jose, uh, your thoughts yeah. on schedule? Because you got you've got wife, kids. How do you how do you create a schedule and stick to it to go from the bottom to the top? Uh, you know, when I got started in the business, I was single. I met my wife in the business, and we had uh, we, we got married. We had uh, our first kid three years ago. I have a three year old and a one year old, two boys. Um, before man, I was grinding it out. Me and George would only leave the office till midnight. Running out of an office, uh, grinding it, grinding it, grinding it, Did, doing what it what it takes. If you're single, go grind it out. You don't have a lot of responsibilities. Um, and then as as we got I got married, had kids, my wife and my wife and I made a decision that we're going to give our kids uh, life experiences, not just a weekend at the park. So we're going to give them life experiences. So we're going to go work hard. Yeah. And I may not see my, my little ones in, in the morning. I just have a lot. I lost you real quick. Give me a second. I might ask some other guys in the morning. I'll see them late at night. But we just said we're going to go run for, let's just say, 60 days. And then we're going to go travel with the company, whether it's Cancun. We're going to cruises. We're going to uh, Costa Rica. We're going to uh, Dubai. We're going to give our kids experiences. They're going to go out there and see the world. Right. So we're okay to temporarily sacrifice for this 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 experience that most people never get a chance to do. Our kids today have more stamps on their passports than most adults and only three years old. <laughs> they can see the world. And we, we love those memories together, man. So it's okay to grind it out during the week. Take your Sunday where we have our family day. And we're okay with that. We're completely okay with that because we have a life lifelong goal as a family that we're building. Temporary sacrifice for long-term reward. And um, don't look for the balance, man. Just make some, some serious sacrifices. And I'll tell you, It'll be worth it because you'll live a life that most people just dream about and you'll have it as an entrepreneur. And uh, Jose, is this your Instagram account there, bro? JF Gaitan. If people want to follow you, that, that's you? Yes, you got um, it. Cool. Thanks. So make sure, guys, make sure if you guys are watching this, make sure you follow George Palayo. I am George Palayo. George with a J. Jorge Palayo, as well as my man, Jose Gaitan. We got Jorge, Jorge, George. And Jose, uh, and his uh, handle on Instagram is JF. What does F stand for, bro? Momento name, Francisco. Francisco. Right. There you go, exactly. man. Jose Francisco Gaetan, man. So yeah. you guys have been awesome, man. And, and guys, they're, they're, just coming, they're just coming straight from Las Vegas from our convention last week called New Force Awakens. Uh, these guys are my business partners. And uh, we're just giddy right now that uh, – uh, we've gotten Oscar De La Hoya to invest in PHP agency and David Brenner and, and a press release should be going out here in the next couple of days, if not today. Um, and I believe, I believe that's also, there it is, baby. Woo! Investors. I, I'm glad you showed that brother. Right. Uh, I was like, I got time. And, uh, and, and, and part of that, part of that talk too, man, by the way, we're a bunch of average and ordinary kids, man. Uh, being in these type of conversations, is, it's it's huge. It's humongous for us. And thank God our CEO, founder, Patrick David, and our president, Tom Ellsworth, is swinging the big bats for us. Uh, there he is, Tom Ellsworth. If you guys don't know who Tom Ellsworth is, if we, call him, we call him Three Comma Tommy. Three Comma uh, Tommy. Three Comma Tommy. You know, what, you know what Tom Ellsworth told me? He goes, you guys give me such such uh, credit for you know selling uh, three companies from scratch to sale, totaling over $1.1 billion. He goes, and the guy there, uh, Greg, uh, top was that top right? We're next to David Brenner. That guy, he sold three different companies for over five billion. So, <laughs> so, uh, so just so, just so you guys know, man. Just so you guys know, uh, these guys, uh, they vet out four. Uh, he was saying on stage, they vet out four deals a week. You know, four deals a week are presented to them, uh, and throughout the year, over two hundred has been presented to them. Approximately four a week, they set aside ten. 10 deals to work with. And the only one company they decided to put their money into and doing it not privately, but doing it publicly, like letting everybody know they're putting their, they're investing in PHP is PHP agency. That's right. That's huge. Right. Yeah. Yep. And, and for those of you guys watching this too, um, I was asking what type of due diligence do they take? I mean, how much, how much like research? Cause you know, you get those people, you know, these, these smart people checking us out and PHP agency, Googling us with all that stuff. Well, these guys spent 160 grand in due diligence. $160,000 in due diligence. 
uh, uh, background checks, credit checks. They look, they look how we got every dollar and they look how we spent every dollar. And they spent very good about putting their money in PHP agency. With guys like Jose Gaetan, with guys like George Palayo, uh, with our CEO founder, Patrick Ben David, our president, Tom Ellsworth, and many other field leaders in our company that's on that brochure. Uh, Jose, can you show that brochure one more time, brother? You got it. Make sure you yeah, go. Man. How, does, how, how to create a West. Go to a local PHP office, man, and make sure you pick up this brochure. We just ordered like 2,500 of them. Nice. Uh, there it is, man. And some of the field leaders there too as well. Some of our other business partners. There's George Palayo. There's my wife and I. There's Jose Marlene, Jason Graziani. Uh, Kehinde Tom is the first African-American. Um, uh, that's the vice president of our company. We got Diana Joe out of Pasadena. There's Hector Del Toro that Jose Gaetan personally mentored. Uh, uh, that's his uh, brother-in-law. And of course, uh, Rodolfo and Ceci Vargas, immigrants from El Salvador, a trained economist and a trained architect now as entrepreneurs and fellow partners of PHP Agency, man. So, brother, it's great to be in business with you, man. And, um, you know, uh, listen here, Richard Ray Cordova says, as a veteran, Matt, as well as, as well as I am, thank you for your service. Well, thank you for your service. What trait from the military do you think helped you most in this business? Very easy, brother, work ethic. Uh, listen, we're used to working 20 hour, 20 hour days, man. Four hours of sleep, no food. You know, you, you did that for Uncle Sam. Why don't you, why don't you do that for yourself? It's either you're building somebody else's dream or you're building our dream. And uh, brother, oh, that's our travel too. We travel all over the world, Aspen. That's when I first met you guys on the phone. When you guys in Aspen, uh, that's us in Dubai. I remember going there 25 years ago uh, for the Persian Gulf War. And uh, crazy, man. Another veteran here is Amante Landor. Thank you for your mentorship and leadership. It's my wife and I in Costa Rica. Uh, yeah, brother, it's all in our brochure, man. That's the whole crew in Costa Rica. That's us. That's us right there. Jose Marli Gaetan and my yeah. wife and I in uh, Cancun. All over the world, man. All over the world, brother. So we'll in Greece, right? We'll jump on that cruise ship in Greece, right? Oh, dude, that's it. That's our next trip. Where, where, where are we going to that trip? We're going to Greece. It's a Mediterranean cruise, so it's Greece. Where else? Santorini. Santorini. Man, uh, places all over Europe, man. Uh, I'm not familiar with that cruise yet, so i got to look it up. I think so. we're going to uh, Croatia. Croatia, too. Isn't it? Croatia. We're going to Croatia. Yeah. Yes, another another veteran here, Nina, Nina Bassnet, another veteran. She served in the Army. And uh, thank you for your service, too, as well, Nina. Thank but, you, Nina. Uh, yep. So, listen, our call to action to you is this. Very simple. If you're watching this video... Uh, if you want to get from the bottom to the top, take this video and, and, uh, and take your notes, but do something about it. And if you want to do something about it, if you don't have people that you're surrounded with that are doers, you got more talkers and doers, my suggestion is you contact Jose Gaetan if you're in L.A. in Burbank. Uh, my man, um, uh, George Pillai, who was on early, he had to jump up, he had to go to an appointment. Uh, he's in Tarzana, California. Listen, we, got, we have offices all over the country. We're in Texas, Florida, Northern California, Southern California, Colorado. Uh, we're in Boston, uh, Indiana, Wisconsin, dude, all over the place. We're, like I mentioned earlier, we're in 49 states. The only state we're not in is Montana because we can't find anybody there to move full time yet. Unless it's you watching this video right now. That's you, you, you. But uh, Jose, great to be in business with you, brother. My oh, man, I appreciate you and your wife, your leadership, your example, man. Money Smart Movement. Woo! Thank That's you, it, bro. And TJA, ole, 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 ole. TJA, <laughs> TJA. Thank you, man. Okay. Jose, thank you guys. And thank you for watching. That's been sharing this and commenting this live stream. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel at Money Smart Guy. And also, that you like our Facebook page. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you got some value out of this. I know I got a lot of value just from to, to my business partners, Jose Gaetan and George Palayo. Stay tuned for the Living Money Smart vlog coming up. I believe it's going to be tomorrow. I'm going to be uh, uh, uploading a preview to what that vlog is going to look like and many, many other things coming through the world of entrepreneurship where you can go from the bottom to the top. Until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys. God bless. Until next week. Bye-bye.